What is going on, guys? Mobile Carry News here. And this article about this about this situation is just kind of cra very crazy to me. So there is this, um, I believe this is like an article, uh, Light Shed, and a couple other people. Um, let me see here what people have said. I think that, I don't know if it's executives or, um, let me scroll down here. Um, let's see, I'm trying to go here. Let me scroll down here. Where is it? Let me read it off to you real quick. So basically, I'll put this article in the description. And basically, what's going on here is that analysts, these analysts right here for Wa uh, Walker, uh, P uh, Piercic, and Joe Gallone, I don't know if I said his last name right, they're basically in, uh, this basically saying that 5G is not being promised for AT&T and Verizon and T-Mobile as well. They're basically uh, bashing all three carriers saying the 5G is not what, what we expected two years later after you guys started 5G. And I just think this is very ridiculous because we all know 5G is a slow pace. It was like basically the same thing for LTE. But LTE took pretty much uh, six, six to ten years to be perfected as it is now because there's now LTE everywhere for all carriers. Even for Sprint before they got bought out slash merged for t for T-Mobile. LTE took a long time when that when LTE cut off there was 3G to save you and 3G worked very well on old devices back then and these guys are just, are basically bashing up and and I think this is the worst the very worst opinion that they can give the three carriers they're basically telling the carriers that they should um because these increased prices and I'm not going to lie you know increasing prices is Especially in what we're going through, recession or just hard times. I'm I'm not saying I I'm not going through bad right now. I'm pretty good, but for other people, like raising prices is just it is absurd. I mean the the companies they uh, they chose that decision, so I can't say much about it. I'm just saying because of the increased prices, they're saying that they should cut capex for all three carriers. And I think that's just ridiculous because AT and T and and Verizon spent a huge amount of chunk of money on C band over over one billion dollars was spent for C band and to improve their five G, and T Mobile is doing the same thing. They're they're investing thirty billion dollars, and the fact that that they're just telling these companies that hey maybe you should guys should slow on the deployment of five G use maybe a billion dollars or or maybe even close nine hundred million dollars. I just think that's absurd. Because if we want 5G to be super blazing fast, reliable coverage, good speeds, uh, lower latency, and overall better performance for any carrier that you have on your device, as you can see I have Verizon here, why would we cut CapEx? It doesn't make any sense. Cutting CapEx would slow the process of 5G. If we cut CapEx for all three carriers, it would take us... Pro instead of 10 years because i'm pretty sure every every new fifth generation as you can see 5g is perfect is perfected in 10 years if they move at, if they move at a fast very progressive pace it will take a, it will take more than 10 years now to actually improve 5g and we're just going to be behind with 6g and it's just going to be a whole mess i do not think these analysts giving their opinion on cutting capex yes it, yes verizon at&t are wrong like they are, are like just wrong for increasing prices we can't do much we gotta either move on from that you know go to a prepaid plan you know do whatever you you can to save money or just stay with them you can afford it you know that's fine but just just saying cutting capex is just absurd it's just my opinion i don't think that's a good idea why would you cut capex when the network will be improved in about 10 like maybe eight seven more years i just think it's outrageous it's just not good and they're also saying you should you should be reducing your c-band and upgrades and these shutdowns i don't think that's another good idea why would you slow on, like if you're slowing down capex why would your next step to be slow down the upgrades that doesn't make any sense Basically, and like these, these billion dollars, like these investments of over uh twenty to thirteen to to thirteen billion dollars, included with in improving the upgrades, is just absurd. I really don't think you should be cutting one thing and then cutting another. You're just slowing the process of five G. It just doesn't make any sense to me. 
Like, uh, like this is the worst advice I've ever heard of analysts giving to carriers. Yes, 5G is taking a long, long time to improve. And do I blame the carriers for lagging, for being slow on this, even though T-Mobile's ahead? Well, it, to me, it doesn't matter who's ahead as long as you have coverage, as long as you have something. Does it matter? No, I don't think it matters because... 5G will take some time. I think by 2025, um, we should be, we should see 5G coverage all around the United States. And the fact that you're saying we should slow down the process, I, that is not a good idea, in my opinion. And I'm pretty sure you guys would agree. Like, why would you slow down the process? Yes, we're not see, we're not seeing the, we're not seeing the, um, the the dream of 5G being blazing fast and how and how we want it to be after two years. Because we're in 2022 and they started this in 2020, I think these analysts need to, you know, take you know, take a chill pill or relax on this and no and basically be told that this is gonna take time. I really don't think we can rush through this. We can. I'm pretty sure eventually we will have 5G. We will have more 5G ultra capacity, ultra wideband, 5G plus. We will be replacing more 5G DSS of all carriers with N5, with N71, N77. But it's going to take some time. Like something like this uh, is, is being worked on on a daily basis. Even right now as I'm making this video, thousands of engineers for T-Mobile, AT&T, and Verizon are currently working on towers in... Yes, half of them have days off and then the other ones do work and they do a switch around as any other job, especially if you're working in the carrier business as an engineer. It like towers are still being worked on. It's going to take some time. And I think these analysts need to have a better reality check on something like this because reducing capex, if you just let me scroll down here, like I said, I'll put this article down in the description so you guys can read the stuff. Slow slash cut capex. Horrible advice. And then, and then head count reductions, horrible. This is just the worst thing I've ever heard of analysts telling the carriers this because we can't be reducing this. We have to be working at a fast pace, even when 6G comes as well. When 6G rolls around, we have to, I honestly believe we have to even go at a faster pace. Well, not me. I don't work for, you know, I, I don't, I, I'm not an engineer for the carriers or executives but i think even 6g they have to work even faster because 6g is going to be going to involve all around just millimeter wave in general and i honestly think if 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 these analysts had better opinions on the network to work maybe even faster and increase capex we will see more improvements with 5g uh coming in 2023 going forward to 2024 and so on and so forth but I really think, you know, this article is just describing it's just not not something we should be going forward because we're just going to be let, we're just going to be lagging behind and we're going to be short on. What do you guys think about this. Do you guys think this is in, this is some insane opinion on these analysts? Let me let me let me know what you guys think. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Subscribe, like, turn on post notifications so you can see more videos like this and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.